Talking about one that are months after its release has a bit of a weird feeling to it. The reason is that, ever since it came out, I always felt like it was kind of misinterpreted by the community, something which caused him to be underrated. A big part of the reason was that when he came out, people just weren't able to get the level of investment he really needs to perform well, but it was also because some people lacked the tools to really amplify his damage, like a solid weapon or Farazan's constellation 6. This video will be a detailed guide about how you can optimize your Wanderer performance more on all fronts. To start off, his playstyle is to this day a controversial topic. Specifically, the community hasn't really settled yet on a best combo for him, as a baseline is a pretty straightforward unit. He enters a buffed stance for around 13 seconds by using his elemental skill, and during that window his main ways of attacking the opponent will be his normal and charge attack, while his burst is either a rotation opener or a rotation closer depending on the exact build your Wanderer has. However, let's focalize on Wanderer's auto attacks for a second. A popular opinion regarding his combos is that his charge attacks can be more valuable than his normal attacks, because they have larger AoE and can amount to higher damage as well. This has caused people to start thinking that charge attack spam is a great combo for him. However, excluding weapons that specifically focus on charge attack damage like Dodoko Tails, this combo is never that great for him, and it is generally weaker than the two main combos I'm going to talk about, namely a sequence of two normal attacks and a charge attack, and simple normal attack spam. The reason these two combos perform better than charge attack spam is that to get the best performance out of that, you'd need to pull off pitch perfect animation cancels to get as many charge attack as possible, something that is not realistic in abyss scenarios. Also, even in the best case scenario, charge attack spam is a side grade to other combos at best. Speaking of which, let's see what the scenario is for the two attack chains I've mentioned previously. In general, it just depends. Normal attack spam just fares better if you have a normal attack buffing weapon like Solar Pearl or Wanderer's Signature, or if you have a normal attack buffing support like Yunjin. Two normal attacks and a charge attack is generally the go-to combo for Wanderer users that haven't pulled for his signature, so overall both are quite valuable options depending on the situation. A common misconception is that without his charge attack, Wanderer doesn't have the means to properly hit opponents in multi-target scenarios. While it's true that you have to work a bit harder to have nice results in AoE with normal attack spam, it's possible to hit multiple opponents at once with them, as their hitbox is not much smaller than the charge attacks. The objective advantage charge attacks have over normal attacks is that they have better application due to lack of internal cooldown, which makes them optimal in case you're trying to break elemental shields. Another common point of discussion is Wanderer's passive which allows him to use the dash button without consuming stance stamina, while simultaneously releasing some anemo attacks towards the closest opponents. This passive just charges up randomly after a sequence of attacks. Generally, it's common knowledge that in optimal combos you want to avoid dashing completely to achieve your ceiling damage, but the truth is that realistically this passive really comes in handy, as it allows Wanderer to dodge attacks or change targets without much damage loss in the process. So consider this extra dash mechanic an emergency button for your Wanderer. Speaking about weapons now, this is another controversial topic. For the same reasons as his combos. The reason is that his signature mainly affects normal attacks damage, basically forcing you to use normal attack spam to take advantage of it, which is a huge blow for all the charge attack believers out there. However, since normal attack spam is actually good with the right weapon, his signature is still really good, outperforming second best options by a fair margin. It's good to remember that Wanderer is a character who is mostly used on hyper teams, so teams where he deals the vast majority of his team damage, so even a difference of 8% between weapons can be quite significant. However, this doesn't mean Wanderer is screwed if you don't have his signature, as Lost Prayer and Widset especially are quite competitive, and if you manipulate Widset's passive through Abyss Reset so you always have either a damage buff or an attack buff for the first rotation, it will compete with Wanderer's signature rather evenly. Kagura, 
Atlas and all the other options are less impressive and less synergetic overall, as Atlas is for example penalized by the fact Wanderer likes to run Bennett a lot on his teams, lowering the impact of its attack stat buffs, and Kagura's passive just isn't that good for him. Still, some 4 star options like Dodoko Tilts and Solar Pearl can be pretty decent at high refinement, so he's not really lacking budget options. Talking about artifacts, this is yet another controversial topic, although maybe not as much as the others. The reason is that people like Shimenawa a lot on Wanderer, for multiple reasons. First, it's easier to farm and to have good stats for, by being paired in a domain with the Emblem of Severed Fate set. Second, Wanderer's burst is not that impressive at Constellation Zero, making the energy penalty on Shimenawa much easier to swallow. Still, the Chronicle Artifact set is what you should go for if you want to maximize Wanderer's potential. It requires you to use a charge attack at the start of Wanderer's window, which can be annoying, but practically it's a considerable damage gain compared to Shimenawa at equal stats, especially if your Wanderer's burst is amplified by his Constellation 2 which is not that uncommon to have if you have gone for, or plan to get, Ferrazan's Constellation 6. Overall, Chronicle is definitely his best option, but Shimenawa can be a solid replacement based on the situation. Speaking about his constellations, they're pretty good, as a high investment wanderer is an exceptional option for speedrun scenarios, and as such is incredibly good at just mopping the floor with the abyss. Specifically, his constellation 2, which powers up his elemental burst, and his constellation 6, which gives extra hits to his normal attacks, are his creme de la creme. In particular, his constellation 2 adds a different layer to his kit, by making his elemental burst much more of a focal point to his rotation. Without it, starting Wanderer's window with his burst is a pretty good option in many scenarios, but since the constellation specifically boosts the burst damage the latter you use it after you activated Wanderer's elemental skill, at constellation 2 it becomes a rotation closer, and a heck of a good one, since it's a powerful enough hit that you can even use it to anticipate the end of your rotation and deal the right amount of damage quicker. Not much to say about the Constellation 6, it just turns Wanderer into a complete machine gun that will disintegrate any opponent in his path with ease. If you're rich enough to get this, then normal attack spam becomes the only option for him, for obvious reasons, and naturally all the teams and weapon builds that affect that type of attack specifically hugely benefit from it. Moving on, regarding his team selection, this is actually the best thing about Wanderer. He's probably the most flexible hypercarry in the game, boasting a wide array of options that can become more useful than others depending on the exact abyss matchup. He has a clear best option damage wise at high investment, which is hypercarry with Yunjin on the team. This composition completely highlights Wanderer's potential as a pure damage leader, as he's backed by three of the best single buffers in the game here. It benefits from rather quick rotations that can be pulled off with no particular mechanical issues, and its only flaw being you might suffer energy wise if you miss a Favonius proc on your supports. The only real kicker, however, is that without Ferrazan's Constellation 6, its damage falls off a cliff. In general, this constellation is a huge thing for Wanderer, since on most of his teams he deals a vast amount of the rotation damage, so basically he will always benefit immensely from the big buff that Constellation 6 provides. It's just so much more than the 40% crit damage buff alone, it's also the fact it allows Ferrazan to run the tenacity of Millilith set consistently by adding extra procs of her elemental skill during burst, and the fact it makes her particle generation much better, allowing Wanderer to burst every rotation without issues, something that is pretty good in general and just invaluable once he gets his Constellation 2. Granted you get this Constellation 6, you will have fun with Wanderer, as you can freely replace place the flex slot occupied by Yun Jin to add a character that fits the situation. Wanderer's passive that gives him different buffs depending on the elements he comes in contact with on a 
this elemental skill activation technically makes him prefer some teammates over others, but it's not a super impactful factor when it comes to his team choices. A cryo character like Layla in the flex slot works very well, since the cryo buff is quite beneficial for Wanderer, and she also covers the shielder role for anti-stagger purposes, but since Wanderer is basically glued to Bennett on this team, it's not always easy to get both the pyro and the cryo buff once Wanderer uses his skill, because of how they disrupt each other elemental gauge-wise before that. It's still perfectly doable, but essentially the only deciding factor when it comes down to the flex slot choice is what you specifically need to deal with a room in terms of elemental shields and opponent's resistances in general. This type of flexibility just makes Wanderer viable in about every context, and that's what's so great about him. Alternatively, if you go for the low investment route and take Ferrazan out of the equation, it's not like Wanderer becomes unplayable, but is severely weaker in that scenario. I'm talking about Wanderer as a driver, and he'll be effectively functioning like a slightly more limited version of Sucrose in that role. The only upside for Wanderer as opposed to Sucrose is that he can perform pretty decently even even with an offensive build instead of a mere supportive build with elemental mastery artifacts and abilities and veneer pieces. So at the very least he won't feel like he's being completely carried by his teammates. Still, it's a pretty secondary role for Wanderer, and definitely not what you should pull him for. In general, pulling for Wanderer probably isn't a great idea unless you have enough pulls to get Ferrazan's Constellation 6 as well, which by itself is quite the gamble, since there is no guarantee for specific 4 stars. Speaking about my personal experience, when my Ferrazan was at Constellation 4, my Wanderer was at Constellation 3, and that wasn't even thanks to lucky low PT 5 star pulls. It took me more than 350 pulls to get Constellation 6 Ferrazan so take this as you will. Of course, that doesn't necessarily mean you'll get unlucky as well, but as a rule of thumb, if you want to get a specific Constellation 6 4 star character, you should hoard around 300 pulls to feel safe about it. However, this kind of reliance on extra pulls to perform well doesn't make Wanderer very exclusive among hyper carries. For example, characters like Ayaka and Huta are much more reliant on their signatures than Wanderer is, and they aren't shy of luxurious supports that enhance their performance greatly enough to be considered staples for them. When it comes to hyper carries, you should be prepared to spend an extra amount compared to the usual, that's just how it is. The reward in this case will be an extremely versatile and potent carry that will have an answer for most scenarios thanks to his team flexibility. I'm done for today. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, a comment and subscribe. See you next time!